الحمد لله كان يقول هيمي الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحد الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد الحمد لله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are all of you? الحمد لله الحمد لله جزاكم الله خيرا for coming for the class um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put lots of barakah in your life in your work in your family in your health in your rizq I mean for you and may Allah accept it from all of you the yearning that you have to come to the class to be a part of the class so that you can learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah, and, and I pray that you and I know I know that you all are here just for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for no other worldly gain because nobody's promising you uh, you know I'm going to pay you thousands of pounds or whatever currency that you you are in the country you are that they're going to pay you per hour but you're just doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mind you that is met much more better than anyone can pay you um alhamdulillah i am good too and i pray that you all are well i pray that you all are in the best of iman in the best of health and i pray for my sisters who are going through uh, a tough time may allah make it easy for them and like i always say that if you, if my sisters are going through an emotional trauma, may Allah make it easy for them. If they are going through some physical challenges, may Allah make it easy for them. May Allah make it easy for those of my sisters who are going through it because people, there are difficult people around her. May Allah make it easy for her. May Allah make it easy. May Allah allow her to be patient. May Allah show her the other end. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward her immensely for all this and may Allah give, give her the, the, the beautiful patience uh, I mean Ya Rabbul Alameen Alhamdulillah now let's come to the homework how many of you have done the homework now please don't say what was the homework everybody knows the homework it was a, a scientific research okay Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah so what did you find about um, the the effects of negative, you know, because suspicion is negative thinking, right? So what, what does it affect? How does it affect the human body? What does the science have to say? What, is, what do psychologists have to say? Okay, Alhamdulillah, many of you did the homework, mashallah. All right, stress, okay, one of the things. Okay, for the one who said it's my first session, oh, welcome sister, makes your body sick. Yes, it yes, the cortisol raises, yes. Depression, mental health, good. Blood pressure. Did, did you know that um, OCD is one of the one, one of the things that people develop because of negative thinking is OCD. Okay. Social problems, yes. Lowers, of course, when you have stress. Yes, hormonal imbalance. And can you imagine the number of women that are suffering from hormonal imbalance? I don't have to say, you don't have to say, we all know. Somewhere, sometime in our life, we all have suffered that. Yeah. And, and, and you know, to be honest, don't we sometimes start thinking negatively? Yeah. Don't we, you know, we stress ourselves. 
laziness. Yes, yes. Okay. So, and now, now I want you to, to, to compare this knowledge with what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us 1400 years ago? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not, was not well versed in science or psychology. But he narrated to us what did Allah want once for us. And you know, and, and that makes you think, Ya Rabb, you are a Rahman, a Rahim. Yeah. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Don't what what is it? Now tell me. I'm not going to tell you. What did what was the first thing in ayah number 12? Don't what? Po yeah, positive thinking. But what was the ayah? What was the ayah? Turn towards your Lord? No. 12, ayah number 12. What was the beginning that we avoid suspicion? Well done, Maryam. Uh mashallah tabakallah. So avoid why suspicion? Assumptions, suspicions, evil, evil assumptions is, is going to harm you much more than it harms the other person. The other person doesn't know anything. You're thinking ill of. Okay? Yes. Well done. And treat others like how you want to be treated. Avoid suspicions, overthinking, evil thinking. Yes? Alhamdulillah. All right, so Alhamdulillah, well done. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this knowledge um, a source of entering Jannah. Uh, you know, my dears, well done to all those who did their homework. Now, all types of suspicions, you know, all, mashallah, all of you got this correct, that, you know, it's not that all types of suspicions are not allowed. Yes, there are some suspicions that are um, not allowed at all. Can you give me an example of one? Each one of you give me one example of one. Which type of suspicions are totally not allowed? That comes into haram category. Yes. Evil exemptions about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Excellent. Well done. And then? And then? Okay. So you, you don't have to. And about his messenger. Okay. Alhamdulillah. And? And about who? About the religion, okay. And um, a trustworthy, having having evil suspicions about um, or not trusting a trustworthy person, right? And even thinking bad about the lifestyle of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like many Westerners are, you know, they don't have knowledge and people who have li little knowledge about Islam and they are, you know, they're brainwashed they will say, oh, why did he, uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, marry a young girl? Little do they know that was a norm at the time. Yeah. So we don't, we don't, uh, we don't have any suspicions about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We don't think bad about his lifestyle, his marriages, his decisions. We don't say anything bad about that. We don't even do, do not tread on that. Alhamdulillah. All right. Which types of suspicions are allowed? Yes. Which types of suspicions are allowed? Good suspicions, yeah. About who? No, no, no. You can you can have good suspicions. You know, some people are accusing someone and you know this person is of integrity. They are good practicing Muslim sister or brother. At that time, you are meant to have a good suspicion of them. Good, well done. But what about... Um, no, 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 not regarding marriage. We're going to come to that. Yes, someone who openly sins, mashallah, tabarakallah. So you know this person is openly sinning and, you know, they are disobedient. But the thing is, we don't start investigating more about their matter. We know that we, we have, you know, we don't like the sin they do. Remember, we, we don't hate the person. We hate the sin they do. Okay. So we need to understand, we need to divide, you know, separate the sin from the human being. The human beings, all human beings, are, are, are all Muslim human beings are, are brothers and sisters in Islam. But the sin they do, we don't like it. Okay. And what else? And what else? What about if people have animosity? Yes, mashallah, tabarakallah. Who said this? Give this answer? Sumaya. Well done, Sumay. So, you know, you, you've, you've made up, but you know that there is something, you know, it's not the same thing. 
then it is on to you that you protect yourself. Don't put, put yourself in danger. Okay. And then lastly, uh, we have, you know, not we, because we are not that knowledgeable, but people who are in, um, high, you know, the scholars of a hadith, when they have to criticize the person who's narrated the hadith, they, you know, they have to be, they have to have suspicions about the person who is narrating the hadith, what type of background he is, is he known to be a liar? So they have to find those findings because this is a matter about uh, religion. Yes, to find the chain of narrators. So that is allowed. That is allowed. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I think we've, I think all of you have understood about not having negative uh, um, thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll not delve into that. Um, we know that now whatever happens in my life is happening for the good. Yes. And I'm never going to say, oh, I'm never going to come out of this situation. I'm not going to say, I'm never going to have a, a, a baby. I'm, not, I'm never going to say, oh, I'm never going to get married. I'm not going to say that. Because I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan for me. Yeah. Okay. And like, for example, you know, you see your elderly people, you know, they get ill and they start saying, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. How do you know you're going to die? You know, have, have good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah says, I am as my servant thinks of me. Okay. And then if you have a lot of problems, uh, uh, you know, and you have, um, you know, there's something that's troubling you in your heart. I told I sent I think the admin sent the dua as well about Allah Aslam to Nafsi ilayk wa fawatu amri ilayk. So when you say, Ya Rab, I'm giving my affairs to you, then you know Allah will look after your affairs. I mean, whatever they may be. And then you go to sleep peacefully. Because you know, you know, it's just like that. Because we don't see Allah and we don't have much knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is why somewhere in our heart we have weakness in Iman. Uh, you know, sometimes if you have a friend who, say, for example, if the minister of the country or very affluent person of the community is your best friend and you are going through some financial troubles and all they do is they can see your face, they know your situation and they write you a check of, say, whatever, thousand in thousands. Yeah. You are so hopeful that this friend of yours is never going to let you down. Right. That is, we need to be much more hopeful in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than that friend of ours. Because that friend of ours has been granted life, has been granted risk from Allah. You don't know how many days he's going to live. So we don't need to, we, you know, the people in our life who are benefiting us, we say that, you know, Ya Allah, that is, you've sent me this person in my life. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabb. So acknowledge that is Allah's blessing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing, that some wonderful people have come in your life. Yeah, trust Allah. Tawakkal uh, ala Allah. That is what it is. When, in whatever. So do not attach yourself too much to people that you're thinking all the good is coming from them or all the bad is coming from them. No. All the things happening in my life are coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's going to make be, you know, we should be able to make you go sleep, go to sleep uh, with a, a, you know, with no stress. Okay. Uh, for those people who are, who don't know the dua, it has been posted on the group. Um, please make sure that you see that. Um, okay. All right. So now we're going to start lesson seven. We're continuing ayah 12. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to complete the, surah, the ayah today. All right, let's begin. Like we said, we begin with the intentions that, Ya Rabb, we're here to seek the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May, may we be of the people who the glad tiding is given that come and see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to meet you. And Allah is pleased with you. May we be of those people. Amen. To become better worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once our own ignorance is, is removed, then we... We take it to ourselves that we go and spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to others. Okay, alhamdulillah. All right, so we're just going to jump all those. Yes. Now we were here in wala tajassasu. Okay. Tajassasu, what does it mean? According to Imam al-Baghawi, it means to find faults in people. 
okay? So someone is keen on finding faults in another person, or you are, you know, investigating a news. So you find, um, you know, you find, and especially this happens within the family members. You are a daughter-in-law, you have a mother-in-law, mother-in-law is very keen. What, are, what is my daughter-in-law talking, right? Or the sister-in-law is too keen because you're all living together and that makes life hell if people are not on Islam. Okay, so, and, and when doing so, they don't have good intentions. They have bad intentions. All right, so, to so all they're doing is trying to find faults or trying to investigate. And basically, are they trying to find out um, things that are apparent or hidden? So Tajasasu is trying to find out things that are hidden. And they don't have good intention about it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and mind my words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden to find things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has covered. Right? For example, the private lives of people. Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you know, is giving us a secure Islamic environment. The don't, do not go into people's house poking your nose into what they're doing, what is happening in their private lives. Ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah, he says, it means to find faults in Muslims and to find their weaknesses. Okay? So what are we given the message? Do not investigate. Do not get into, and this is, you know, when we say investigate, it's, you know, people who don't have knowledge of Quran, they like to eavesdrop. They like to stand on the other side of the door and listen to conversations that are happening. And may Allah protect us. If we are one of them, may Allah change our hearts if we are one of them. And there's a hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, part of perfection of one's Islam is leaving that which does not concern him. So if it does not concern you, why do you get yourself into it? Okay. Now, but the question is, my question to all of you, why do people spy in the first place? Why? Can you tell me why do people spy? Anyone? Jealousy? Okay. Being nosy? Mm. Clarify their dogs? So it means their suspicions. Suspicions. Yes, that's the correct answer. Because why they want to find they because they're suspicious, they want to find the weakness of the people. Well done. And has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly forbidden being suspicious? Yes or no? Yes. All right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is totally forbidden. So now, what are the types of spying do you think Allah has forbidden? Can you tell me what are the types of spying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden? That's very common in our cultures, by the way. Right? Can you tell me types of spying that Allah has forbidden? Yes, to seek to seek out faults in others. Good. No, the husband is not meant to uh, be spying on the wife, and the wife is not meant to be spying on the husband, mind you. Okay. Eavesdropping. Well done. Um, what about you know you you're there, you're asleep, and people come and talk, but you just you wake up because of their conversation, but and you act asleep. That's wrong too. That's not allowed. Okay. Can you tell me the some spying that is allowed? Some spying that is allowed. For war. Good. And and also why to do and during the war. The Islamic war, okay, with the knowledge of the leader. And the purpose is to save the Muslims, okay? The next thing is about marriage proposals. Well done. Well done. But husband cannot spy on the wife. The wife cannot spy on the husband. That's not allowed. And Mu'avi, he narrates a hadith that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, verily, if you seek out faults of people, you will corrupt them or nearly corrupt them. And that, isn't that so? Isn't that so? 
and in Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that had they marched out with you, they would have added nothing except disorder. And they would have hurried about in your midst, spreading corruption and sowing sedition among you. And there are some among you who have listened to them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowing of the zalimun, meaning spying is a trait of hypocrites. It's Surah Tawbah, Ayah 47. Okay, so spying is a trait of hypocrites. May Allah protect us. And I think anyone who becomes a student of the Quran, this is one thing that we don't care. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't want to go and hear what people are saying. Parents and children, up to a certain extent. You know, like for example, now parents in this time of digital age, you give the phone to your children and uh, you you install some an app which keeps telling you which um, which websites or which apps is your child accessing. Now you have told that to your child. You should tell that that to your child. All right. So that you know, spying is haram. Okay. Because uh, full stop. Allah did not say. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did not say. Okay, you can spy on your child. So you tell them that look, I've installed a software that's going to keep you in check. And that will inform me of what you're doing. Yes. So then that child also knows my mom will know what I'm doing. So that keeps the child in check as well. All right. So you're not exactly spying. You tell them. You tell them that this is what I'm going to do because you are still immature and the world is, you know, is full of predators out there. You don't know some people. They're liars. They don't appear to be what they are. And I don't think that you're mature enough. And hence, I need to keep a check. All right. So then in that way, you're not really spying. You're just keeping an eye on your child. All right. So now, so what do we learn that we are not going to eavesdrop? Right. We're not going to be curious about what other people are doing. Sometimes, you know, um, you know, sometimes you are in a gathering of people. And then you are hell bound to find out, have you prayed? Have you prayed? Have you prayed? Just to, to tell people, look, I pray on time. Don't do that. Okay. An intelligent person is always looking for their own faults and trying to correct them. But a person who does not know better is looking into others' faults. Yeah. And uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that anyone who listens to people talking when they dislike him doing so, so this person does not like that you listen to his, their conversation, or this person, they like to be away from this, this person who is listening, they will have molten lead poured into, his, into their ears on the day of judgment. Uh, I will show you the hadith in a minute. Okay. Now, while we're on that topic, I want you, I'm going to give you some homework. I want you to find a hadith about peeping in people's homes. So the homework is, I want you to find a hadith about peeping in people's homes. Are we allowed to do that? You know, sometimes you, you, you're walking past, you know, especially in London, uh, it happens a lot. I don't know where you have big houses which have huge boundary walls. Maybe that's not the case. But if you're walking in London and, you know, it's evening time, people have not, you know, drawn their curtains and they've nice, beautifully decorated homes. And your purpose is not spying, but your purpose is appreciating their decor and the interior decor, the decor of the house. But you can't do that. You, ca you cannot do that. You cannot look, you cannot peep into, um, into someone's homes but you need to find to me for me a hadith that's the homework okay right can you all hear me clearly yes okay alhamdulillah there's another thing very common in some cultures i see some people you know they visit your house they will not ask your permission right um they will go in your kitchen and they will investigate the whole kitchen. Sometimes so much so that they will go and, and, you know, pick the lid of your saucepan to check what you've cooked. Yeah, they walk through your house without your permission. 
or they will, uh, you know, just go into your toilet without asking you. Maybe you have some private things in your toilet. If they ask you, then you remove them and you say, okay, you can go in now. So that is all wrong. That is not from the manners. And that is, it is like spying. And you know what they do? And I know, and I have heard these women, they talk. When they, when they get together, they say, oh my God, you should have seen her saucepans. They were not shining at all. They were dirty. Oh my God, I touched the cooker head and then it was greased. And, and the, or sometimes they will say, oh wow, that woman is clean. I touched her cooker head and it was sparkling, squeaky clean. Subhanallah. You know, you meant to go, you're visiting someone, sit in their sitting room, that's about it. Why would you have to navigate through the whole house, look into her bedroom, how she's got her bedroom furniture? Why? Okay, so please avoid that. And I'm sure, I'm sure you don't. Um, no, 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 I'm not talking about when you're renting, you're going to find a rental property. This is, this is when a friend has invited you to her house and then you go around gallivanting in her house without her permission. Yes. So rental property is something else. You're investing into it. But it's you've been invited to somebody's house. Then you, you better sit down unless they ask you to come in the kitchen. Or unless they un, you, you're in urgent need. So you ask, can I please use your toilet? Not just walk into their toilet. Even if she's your best friend, ask her. Yeah. No, 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 no. This is, you know, they're trying, I'll tell you, when these people, yes, it happens. And I'll tell you, yes, they even check the wardrobe, subhanallah. You know why? Because they have to go out and talk about, her, you know, how she's keeping her house and, um, you know, how she's, you know, is her kitchen clean and all this. Maybe she's going through a rough time. Maybe she's too occupied with her young children. She doesn't have time to clean. We don't judge her. We don't judge anybody how they have kept their kitchen or how they've kept their bathroom or how they're doing their, you know, whatever they're doing. Isn't, isn't it how we meant to love the person as who they are? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them. Another thing is, you know, some of us are very curious what messages other people are receiving on their phone. So when the, someone accidentally leaves their phone so that they just gone away, so please don't peep into their phone. Please don't peep into people's phone. Don't try read messages. Or don't, don't just, you know, see the headline. Who is this message? So if it's your son's phone and a girl, you know, whatever, um, Aisha has messaged and now you are all on him. What is the, who is this Aisha? Who is this Aisha? Well, you were not meant to, you, you were not meant to see his phone anyway. Okay. And also, if, you know, subhanAllah, if somebody's left their phone on and it's not just gone off, uh, don't look, you know, don't grab their phone and start looking into their personal um, messages. Or, you know, sometimes we go on social media and we try and look into people's uh, photos. That spying is in that. No, when they give the password still, but try and avoid. But, you know, we try and look into their photos because we want to know their family life, how it is. Okay. Because all this is going to leave us with an ill feeling. And remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, all you Muslims, all of you are brothers and sisters in Islam. Now, if there's going to be ill feelings in the heart, is there going to be a society which is where people are thriving in brotherhood or sisterhood? No. What are we meant to do? We are meant to deal with people on the apparent. Okay? So much so that scholars say it is haram to work for intelligence companies, secret services. It's haram. Why? Because you know why? Because you tell me why. You tell me why. Why do the scholars say it's haram for working, working for intelligence, in, in, intelligence services, intelligence Spying and spying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right? You are not meant to spy. And you know, when you, when you get hired with these uh, investigating agencies, they will ask you to spy on Muslims. 
and that's detrimental. Yes. So much so that, you know, if you suspect, if someone suspects that someone is doing haram, but they are doing haram in the confines of their own house, right? Spying is not allowed because you are suspecting. Okay? And I'll tell you the hadith. Let me read this hadith for you. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, beware of suspicion for suspicion is the falsest of tales. Do not seek out false. Remember we said, wala tajassasu. Do not seek out false. Do not spy on each other. Do not contend with each other. Do not envy each other. Now, what is the best, what, what can you do best to avoid envy? I'll tell you. When you see a blessing that your friend or sister or someone you know has, right? At that same moment, Make dua for them that may Allah bless it for you. And then you ask in your heart, Ya Rab, can I have this blessing as well? Can I have this big house as well? Can I have this car as well? So then the element of jealousy goes, the element of envy goes. And Allah bless, blesses that, that person with what, whatever they have. So you don't end up giving them evil eye and making them sick. Do you see? Do not hate each other. Do not turn away from each other. Rather be servants of Allah as brothers. Okay? And we've done this. And we, and subhanAllah, look, encouragement for us to not look over faults of others. Blessed is he who is occupied with his own faults over the faults of people. Yeah? So if you want to be blessed, ignore what other people are doing. Focus on yourself. Because remember, you're going to go alone in your grave. No one's coming to your rescue. Today, you can have people who are going to say, yes, yes, go and spy on this one. And there's going to be a lot of, you know, talking. But then, in the end of the day, it's you who's going to um, be responsible for your actions. Now, someone's asking, does it mean if a friend posted some pictures on social media, we cannot see them? No, I'm not saying that. That you can see that, but you know, sometimes you go on investigating, for example, on Facebook, you go into that person's account, start in looking into their pictures, which they've posted five years ago, because you want to know about their family, or sometimes you don't know this person, they're not your friend, but you want to go and spy on them, okay? No, my dear sisters. You are not meant to spy. The husband is not meant to spy on the wife. The wife is not meant to spy on the husband. Full stop. If anyone is doing that, you know, say astaghfirullah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, if there is no hadith you can bring to me, there's no ayah in the Quran you can bring to me that you're, it is allowed for the husband to spy on the wife or the wife to spy on the husband. And like I said to you, look, I'll show you the hadith. And this, this hadith I've already read to you that the messenger of Allah uh, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa he said, he who seeks to listen to the talk of a people secretly, so you are in the habit, you're secretly listening to their conversations, will have molten lead poured into his ears on the day of resurrection. Okay. Just hold on a moment, please. Yes, Jazakumullah khairan. Yes, for marriage proposals, yes, you can. Marriage proposals is allowed. Okay. All right, now look at this. The tail bearer, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, the tail bearer will not enter Jannah. Subhanallah. And there's also one, the habitual eavesdropper will not enter Jannah. And in another narration, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, the gossip monger will not enter Jannah. Okay, so isn't that enough? Isn't that enough for us to hold back? Now, for someone who you're asking me if this person is zakat eligible, will that, no. You, you do your research, but don't go and delve more into. If you ask people around, and if they say they are zakat eligible, 
All right, you've done your research by asking people because people would know that they're going through a difficult situation, but don't go into too much. If they are saying, then the onus is onto them, okay? Okay, Jazakum Allah Khairan. Tale bearer, meaning someone who's telling stories about other people. Okay? So, you know, this person is doing that and this person is doing that. That's what it is. And let me just tell you, my dear sisters, if either of the spouses, they cheat on one another, they are doing a sin anyway. You don't want to get into the sin. You keep your heart content that Allah married you to this person. And as long as Allah wants, the marriage will continue, right? We we need to be a bit more broad-minded in that. It's okay. Don't, don't mess up your life for that. Make dua to Allah. Make your connection with Allah stronger, okay? And, you know, it, the spying and suspicion is only going to stress you out more, okay? And make dua that Allah exposes this person, shows it to you in front, and then you come to a conclusion. You want to continue the relationship or you don't want to continue a relationship. Okay? But don't, you know, the spying and, and all that is only going to make you very, very unwell. And if you have children, that's going to affect the children immensely. Yes, trust in Allah. Always, hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Say, Ya Rab, I, I put my matters to you. Ya Allah, I entrust my matters to you. So if Allah is entrusted with something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never wastes it. Okay? Understand that anything happening in your life, Allah knows that there is, there, there is a reason. Ask Allah. Ask Allah, Ya Rab, I'm going through this difficult time. Tell me, what, what do you want from me in this? Guide me to do the right actions. Sometimes, you know, we become so involved with our spouses, we forget Allah. And then these very people cheat on us. Why? Because we made Allah less important and, and this person more important in our life. Never do that. Never, ever do that. Sometimes mothers go to the extent they don't pray, just looking after the needs of their children. Their children is their top, are their top priorities. They forget praying. They forget everything. Then Allah tells them, and these very children, when they grow up, they leave this mother. And by that time she's become old, she can't do sajda, she can't pray as, in, as, as good as when she was young. So she has totally lost it. She lost the dunya, she lost Allah, right? Whereas when you have Allah on your side, believe me, everybody will come back to you if they are meant to. If something is good for you, it will come back to you. If someone loves you, they will come back to you. Don't start running after you know, you need to love me. No, have your dignity. Okay, now let's go on. Islamic, now look at this beautiful thing. Islamic law rejects evidence based on spying. Can you believe that? Subhanallah. And in the West, it's the opposite. People are spying. They've got, you know, they've got, um, what is that called? I can't remember the name. They put in people's homes and they uh, they record what, what they are, uh, saying and they put cameras all around subhanallah look at that and and you know they they continue they accept it but in islam it's not accepted cc now not the cctv you know they bug the whole area the whole house or they do something like that look at this beautiful zaid ibn wahab reported a man was brought to ibn mas'ud okay may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta anhu may allah be pleased with him and it was said this man was found with wine dripping from his beard. Now, this man clearly, you know, this wine dripping from his beard. Ibn Mas'ud said, verily, we have been prohibited from spying. But if he shows it to us publicly, we will seize him. So just because we assumed he is, uh, is consuming alcohol, that's not enough. But if you publicly see, yeah. So Ibn Masood, he said, we have been forbidden from spying, but if any evidence appears in the open, we will use it. Okay, so that's what it is. So if you think your husband is spying, you think your wife is spying, and then an evidence comes across, you, you, you see something, you see a message, then you ask him, you ask him, is there something going on? Is there something I should know? And it, you know, it's better that you speak to me, you tell me, I don't want you to hold me back in the dark. And then you tell, you explain, don't shout, don't scream. 
Okay. Okay, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be of the people of the Quran. Okay, and remember, if you seek out and all those people who are spying on their husbands or the husband spying, look at that, the hadith, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi if you seek out, and especially, you know, even if you're spying on your children, for example, and you don't tell them that you're keeping an eye, what, do you, what would you do? You seek out the faults of people, you're trying to find out their faults. You will corrupt them or nearly corrupt them. Yeah? Okay. So, no, having CCTV in the house is okay. All right? That is for your safety, but you're not being, meant to be spying on people. Okay? So, what do we learn? Avoid sp spying as it causes hatred among people. All right? Deal with people on the apparent. Okay? And that's going to keep us peaceful as well. It, it'll, because remember, you're not in this dunya to keep up relationships. You're in this dunya to, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the relationships that you have, all the relations that you have are there that through those relationships, you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's my dear, another thing. If the, if the husband sees and he brings four witnesses, which is, I don't know how he's going to do that. You know, just, you know, take that matter with the shuyukh. But I'm talking about, you know, just talk about the basic level. And then if there is some, if there is a case with certain people, may Allah make it easy for you, my dear sister. May Allah make it easy for you. And may Allah guide the husband and the wife. Okay, apparent meaning what you see on the face of it. If your son says, I don't have a girlfriend, and you are hellbound in saying, I think you have a girlfriend. If he's saying, then take his word for it. Okay. And if you think that this person is, you know, uh, for example, you lost something and there's many people in the house and you ask them, then, okay, accept it. They say they have not taken that thing. That's fine. Accept it. Okay. And don't worry about what other people are saying to other people. Let's correct our manners. Let's be the people who don't spy, who don't investigate about other people. Okay? Ignore what other people are doing. Now let's go on to next next habit that we need to break. Do not backbite one another. Okay? It's not do not spy. Here's do not backbite one another. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ayuhibbu ahadukum? Would any one of you like to eat his brother's dead flesh? No, you would hate it. Now, Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he says that there are three types of habits that are mentioned in the Quran, which are bad. Okay, backbiting. And what is backbiting? You speaking of a fault or weakness in a person that they possess. Okay. Or to, to remember that, you know, you remember something that you, you know, he, the person hates, but you're seeing out of sympathy. For example, someone's marriage, you know, they got, they recently got divorced and, and you had to get, you had to get together. And that, that, that girl didn't come to the get together. So someone asked, where is she? I don't see her. And then you say, oh, haven't you heard? Oh, the poor lady, she got divorced. Now, what you're saying is the truth, but she doesn't like you mentioning about her, her married life at this moment. So what you, you've done out of sympathy, you've done out of pity, but that person would not like it. Then, what you have done is you have backbitten. Okay. The other, other bad manners is the, the bad habit is, is lying. Right. Someone told you about someone which you are not sure. Okay. But you still go on telling other people about it. Whereas slander is, you know, to damage someone's reputation, you start saying wrong things about them. And gossip, what does gossip mean? You say something that will cause displeasure among people. People will start hating one another. Yes, 
Don't talk about uh, people who have passed away as well. Bad things. And look, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not leave any stone unturned. He exactly, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, explained what is backbiting. It is to say something about a person he'll dislike. Someone asked, what if what I say is true? Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, well, if what you say is about him is true, you are backbiting him. But if it's not true, then it's a slander. And in the West, slander, the people can take you to court for slander. Yeah. Even, even so much so that mothers should not speak about their children's faults to others unless you are seeking advice. Unless you're seeking advice from a friend, do not complain about your children's faults. A scholar mentions that if you see a disabled person, and you mention his disability to others, you have backbitten him as that was his weakness. Do you understand? Slander is to say something to, to say something which is not true about someone to damage their uh, reputation. And you know, sometimes we say, oh, we don't have bad intentions. We have good intentions for that person. We are just saying, we're just saying it because I mean well for that person. But did you know that the road to the hell, the road to Jahannam is paved with good intentions? All those people landed in hell because they had good intentions. They, they did things, they said things they were not meant to, but they were ha having good intentions. You shouldn't do that. Okay. Subhanallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us. Now, this hadith, let me just tell you. Now, this hadith, when I was researching this hadith, I found it in two places. Then I read about it, and, that, and, and I need to still check its authenticity. It is uh, Sheikh Albani regards this hadith as daif, but I need to find it more. This is in Musnad Ahmed, and these, these two women. The, and this is one of the miracles of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So two, two women were brought and they were, you know, they were fasting and, you know, they were in a, in a very bad situation. And then the people came to Rasulullah Sallallahu and said that, you know, please allow them to break their fast. And um, because these, these women are going to die if they don't break their fast. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kept turning away. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked for a bowl to be brought and then asked one of the women, woman to... Uh, to vomit okay and would you believe that when she vomited she vomited out blood pus and pieces of flesh which half filled the bowl and then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turned to the other and she did the same and look at what Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said verily these two have fasted from what Allah has made halal for them okay meaning the food they they did not eat the food they did not eat um, did not drink or eat. So they have fasted from what Allah made halal for them and broken their fast from what Allah has made haram. So Allah made haram for them to backbite. So all these ladies, these two ladies, they were busy backbiting people. They spend their fast eating the flesh of others. And based on this hadith, Ibn Hazm, and that is an Ibn Hazm's opinion that the fast breaks when uh, people backbite. But that's Ibn Hazm, that's not, so we just, we don't, we don't take it, but you know, it does affect your fast, no doubt about that. It does affect your fast, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not just want you to refrain from eating and drinking, but, and understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says, don't do certain things, then that's an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the next hadith, the people whom I hate most, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the people are whom I hate most, and who are furthest from me, on the day of judgment are those who talk uselessly and those who put down others and those who show off when they talk. SubhanAllah. And now so much so, you know, when people are backbiting and you know, you know what people are talking about, you know, that person would not like. So what do you do? You should as a Muslim honor, defend his honor. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he who defends the honor of his Muslim brother, Allah will securely, will secure his face against the fire on the day of judgment. Meaning the fire of Jahannam will not touch him because he defended the honor of his Muslim brother in his absence. 
okay <clears throat> and we've done this uh, look at this one this this is a beautiful hadith if this does not put us off from backbiting i don't know what will do not backbite muslims do not search for their faults for if anyone searches for their faults allah will search for his fault and if allah searches for the faults of anyone he humiliates can you not hear me Can you all hear me? Okay, alhamdulillah, you can hear me? All right, okay, alhamdulillah. Um, and look at this, I'll, when you, you know, may Allah protect us that we find faults in other people. Why? Because you start finding faults in other people, Allah will start searching your faults. And if Allah starts searching someone's faults, and look at that, Allah will humiliate that person even if that person hides in the house, in his own house. Ya Rabbi. Ya Rab. And you know, we, and you can see, you can see it happening. You know, all these uh, news, news um, papers and all these magazines, and they start saying, this person is having an affair that, with that person, this person having that affair. And then little do you know, after, after some time, that that person who wrote that news article has been defamed, isn't it? So that is the hadith. Hadith is the true word. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent these words to the mouth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if, you know, may Allah, Allah uh, protect us from humiliation in this dunya and in akhirah. Amin ya Rabb. And look at this. And there's another hadith, you know, we should put, off, put us off. Ghiba, uh, ghiba is, you know, when you are talking about someone and that is, that is true. What you're telling is true but that person would not like. And there's another thing called namima, that is tale telling. She said that, he said that, oh, you know this happened, oh, you know that happened. And Nabi Sallallahu was passing through by two graves. And, they, and Nabi Sallallahu said, verily, they are both being punished, but not for a sin difficult to avoid. As for the one, he is punished for the habit of soiling himself with urine. So, you know, when he used to go to the toilet, you know, there would be drops of urine on his clothes and he would not care about it. And the other one, the other one is punished for the habit of backbiting. Back, it's written here, backbiting, but the, he was tail -tale. He would always tail tell Namima. That's right. Okay. Allahu Akbar. Another hadith. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when I was taken on my night journey, Mi'raj, I passed by people who had metal hooks in their hands and they were clawing at their face and necks. I said, who are these, O Jibreel? Jibreel said, these are the ones who, ate, who eat the flesh of people. And, the, and this is the ayah of Surah Hujrat, ayah number 12, and attack their honor. So these people, they would backbite people and, and, and attack, you know, because when you're backbiting, you're basically dishonoring the people. Okay. So what are the things, what are the things that we should be really doing? We're running out of time. Uh, that we need to remember Allah often because remembrance of Allah is the cure and the remembrance of people is a disease. Write this down somewhere. Remembrance of Allah is the cure and remembrance of people is a disease. And sometimes I see, you know, some people just talking about people or I see elderly parents just talking about a, their children. Why? Why? Okay, so we need to stop commenting on personal matters of people and remember Allah often. And so much so that if you are in a gathering, Ibn Baz, rahimahullah, he said, if you cannot forbid because you are someone, you know, people don't know you, you don't hold, uh, you know, you're not one of the elite people and these people are talking, you can't stop them, then you must leave the gathering. If you stay in that gathering, you're sinning. Hmm. And Hassan al-Basri, someone came to him and said, you know, this person has backbitten you. So Hassan al-Basri, what he did, rahimahullah, he sent a, a dish of sweet dates to the backbiter and said, I heard that you have given me your good deeds as a gift. So I want to repay you for it, but please excuse me for I'm unable to completely repay you. Subhanallah. <laughs> Subhanallah. So the backbiter will not enter Jannah. Okay, the reasons for entering hellfire, look at the Surah Mudathir, 
from ayah 43 to 46. One of them is idle talk, backbiting, lying, speaking without knowledge, apart from the rest of the three. That's the one because we're focusing on that. I wanted to highlight that. Okay. So what are the things to do? Like I said, we need to remember Allah more and we need to stop commenting on people's personal matters. Don't imitate people behind their backs, either by action or by writing. Okay, why? Now please write it down somewhere in bold. Backbiting is a major sin. Also, do not pe put down people because of their family or profession. Oh, this person is just, you know, what do they do for a living? Or oh, they're just a cleaner, or they're just a plumber, or are they just, they just an electrician? Because we only respect doctors and engineers. What nonsense is this? Anyone who is earning halal, they should be respected. Don't look down on them. Yes. Okay. Or don't, or, or don't talk about, don't put down people because, oh, she wears the same outfit for the last three occasions we've had a get together. How do, how, why do you do that? Right? Backbiting is the characteristic of the worst of people. Yeah? And the one who doesn't guard their tongue, they lose the respect among people. Okay, so we need to avoid that. Now, let me just go through quickly and take two, three minutes of your time. I'm sorry. What are the evils of backbiting? Number one, I've read the hadith to you that this person is going to, Allah will bring humiliation to this person, even if this person is at home. Okay, number two, it hardens the heart of the person. When you speak a lot about dunya or listen, you know, a lot about whatever is happening, the fashion trends or whatever is happening, X, Y, Z, then your heart gets hardened. And it is only through remembering Allah that the rest, the rust of the heart gets away. So if you talk a lot about dunya without remembering Allah, then the heart gets rusty. And backbiting is an illness. Umar radiallahu who said, Make it compulsory on you to remember Allah as it's a shifa. Remember, I told you that. And it's compulsory that you avoid speaking about others as it is an illness. And, and people, you know, people, you, you think you're going to be funny. You're going to be center of attraction because you're bringing all these news. But really and truly, people lose respect for you. Why? Because when you walk out of that gathering, people will start speaking about you. Okay, and also when you make fun of someone, you will not die unless you get that thing in yourself as well. And also when who, who does backbiting, they miss opportunity to do good. Why? Whoever they have backbitten, that person. So you may, ha you may hate that person, but what you've done indirectly, given them the reward. Your salah, you prayed so hard, you learned the Quran so hard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give the good deed, your good deed to them. So how come you hate that person, but you're benefiting that person? Then number seven, punishment in the grave. Okay. And I just told you the, uh, the hadith that that person was in, into tale telling. Number eight is going to be this person is going to be bankrupt on the day of judgment. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell all those people that this person backbit about you. They will form a queue and get all your good deeds one by one. And then I, I, I have sent the hadith to you as well that the person who backbites will be furthest away from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the other thing is, you know, um, subhanallah, in this dunya, do we give our bank cards to people? Do we? Tell me. Would you give your bank card to some stranger? Hmm. Would you do that? No. But then what do we do when we backbite? We're doing worse than that. Dunya's bank card is only for dunya. But when you backbite, you give them a free hand. Take my good deeds. Yeah? Okay. And then Quran, uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran mentions that, you know, if you do that, it's like you're eating your dead brother's flesh. And like some of you said to me, why does one backbite? Because they're jealous. And, and in, you know, so how do we repel that habit? We say that that's a blessing this person got. Ya Rab, can I be 
uh, entitled to this blessing, then there will be no element of jealousy or, or en being envious. Okay. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right, let's quickly go through what are the places where you can do riba. Okay, you can, it's not completely not allowed. Um, you, for example, you want to change, there's an evil going on in the society. You have to talk about it to change an evil. For example, you have to ask for a fatwa. So you, you, know, you, you see things happening, like between the husband and wife, there's things happening, right? You see it on the parent. Then you go to the sheikh, you ask for fatwa, you tell your, the sheikh what is happening. Then that is allowed riba, okay? Um, marriage proposal, it's allowed. For a joint business venture, you, you're getting into a business uh, venture with someone, you're getting into a partnership, but you want to ask that you, who you're getting into partnership, does, does that person have good business ethics? You need to find out, okay? Then you do that. Or you, you, you want to get justice after being oppressed, you have to go to the judge and tell them, okay? So, or when you're selling a faulty pr product, you have to tell this, that, oh no, brother or sister, this is, there's a fault in this product. This person is selling you a faulty product. Um, okay. But the question is, can you tell me, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention it and give it, you know, compare it to eating flesh? What does the meat do? All right, somebody's asking me, what is actually backbiting? Backbiting is talking about someone and you're telling the truth about someone, but that person will not like what you said. Okay, now my question was, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention eating flesh? Now understand the meat, the flesh covers the bones, right? It hides the bones. Imagine if we didn't have any flesh, how ugly we would look. Look at the skeleton, how beautiful subhanahu wa ta'ala made, uh, made us. Because the flesh covers the bones, right? But when someone backbites, what do they do? They uncover the weakness of that person. Okay? And according to Ibn Abbas, backbiting is haram. All right? Now, now that, you know, we have in the past, you know, We've, we've been suspicious, we've done spying, we've done riba, we've, be, we've backbitten, we've been into tale telling. What do we do now? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so kind. Allah says, Allah. Be fearful of Allah. Have taqwa of Allah. Inna Allah rahim. Indeed, Allah is the one who accepts the repentance and Allah is most merciful. Look at these beautiful two names of Allah, Tawwab ar rahim Why? Because number one, if you have taqwa, you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to stop from doing the sins. Only the fear of Allah is going to help you avoid the backbiting. And then Allah is giving hope. Look, you've done all that. You've done all that. But be hopeful. Why? Because Allah's name, at tawab and tawab is the one who is often forgiving, the one who gives you the op opportunity to do tawbah. Now, imagine the reason why you're sitting in this class. Maybe there is a reason that Allah brought you here because Allah wants to purify you. Allah wants you to hear his words and the words of his prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa so that you correct yourself. So opportunity, one who gives opportunity to do tawbah, and when tawbah is done, he accepts it. So, you know, we make sincere tawbah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Rabbi, if I've done anything wrong, Ya Allah, forgive me. And Ya Allah, bless that person who I have backbitten, who I have spied, uh, and so that they don't ask me for my good deeds on the day of judgment. And then Allah says, don't worry. I'm a rahim a rahim the most merciful. As long as you're doing sincere tawbah, Allah will accept it. Okay? Alhamdulillah. And all of you know, uh, I, with this I will end, all of you know the story of, um, you know, um, uh, Abu Sayyid al-Khudri, he reports a story, because it's saying that Allah is a, a tawab al-Rahim. How many of you know the story of the person who killed 99 people? Do you know the story? Okay, let me quickly tell you the story. Uh, and this is a hadith, by the way. And it just shows how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And this is like a reassurance to all those who were guilty, all of us really, or who were guilty of sins of backbiting, spying, suspicion, and they stopped doing them. Uh, and, and we know that Allah will forgive because of the story. So there was a man 
he killed 99 people. And then he went to one of the religious scholar and said, you know, I feel remorse. And, um, you know, I, I want you, to, is there any way out for me? And, uh, and that person said, no, there's no way. There's no way that Allah will accept your repentance. So then, you know what he said? He got angry with that monk and he killed him. And, and he killed him and he made it to a hundred murders now. So then he continued, he went, keep on, he kept on continuing to ask religious scholars and he was directed to one scholar. He told the scholar of his hundred murders and asked if he could make repentance. The scholar said, yes, you can, of course you can. And then he said, you know, but you need to, you need, you need to go to another place where there are people who are devoted to prayer and acts of worship. So you need to leave your friends basically. So um, he told him to join them in worship and not return to his native land. The man set out for, on his journey to go to that land. But you know, uh, you know, after just covering nearly half a distance, the man died in the way. Now the angels of mercy came down and angels of punishment came down and they started having an argument. Now the, the angels of mercy argued that this man has come seeking Allah's forgiveness and was sorry for his sins. But the angels of punishment replied that he had done no good at, at all. And another angel appeared. And I'm reading this hadith for you, by the way. Another angel appeared in, in a human form and told them, measure the land from which he, he was nearest. And look at the mercy of Allah. They measured the land and found that he was nearer to the land which he was heading to. So the angels of mercy took possession of his soul. So it is the intention, isn't it? Subhanallah. It is the intention that counts. May Allah make us of those. Okay. Jazakumullahu khairan, my dear sisters. I've taken 11 minutes of your time. May Allah accept it from all of us. And may Allah make us of those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And may Allah change our habits uh, and so that we can be better Muslims and, and not be of those people who work hard to do good, but then someone else takes our good deeds. May Allah busy us with remembering him and him alone and not mentioning the people. The best thing I think is stop talking about people, full stop. Okay, talk about ideas, talk about, you know, um, things that you can do. Um, to, to progress in your deen or dunya, but don't talk about people. Okay, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal the sick among us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, make the situation easy for our sisters who are going through a difficult time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. Maybe be of those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the, 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 the glad tiding that you've been given Jannah. Maybe, may we be of all those people whose last day is the happiest day of their lives. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka, astaghfiruka, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.